A gas cylinder is a container that stores a gaseous compound under pressure. The physical form of the stored compound can be gas or liquid, with the ultimate output from the apparatus being gaseous. The stored gas exerts pressure on the cylinder wall and it can be measured. This measurement may be expressed in the SI unit of Pascal or kilopascal, as well as in many other units including PSI, atmosphere, centimeter of water, millimeter of mercury in bar. Either vacuum or atmospheric pressure can be used as a reference point while measuring pressure. PSI, PSIG, and PSIA are metrics used to measure pressure. PSI is just a number of pounds of force applied to an area of one square inch. The scale PSI does not have to refer to a gas pressure but in common use, it is assumed that it is PSIG. PSIG is pound per square inch gauge. Gauge pressure is measured relative to ambient atmospheric pressure and starts with zero at atmospheric pressure. Cylinder pressures are measured with PSIG. PSIA is pounds per square inch absolute. It refers to pressure relative to zero or a perfect vacuum. The PSIA scale starts with zero at a perfect vacuum, the absence of any pressure. Compressed gas is a substance that is a gas at normal room temperature and pressure, and is contained under pressure, usually in a cylinder. Two major types of compressed gases are liquefied and non-liquefied gases. Liquefied gases are gases that can become liquids at normal temperatures when they are inside cylinders under pressure. They exist inside the cylinder in a liquid vapor balance or equilibrium. As gas is removed from the cylinder, enough liquid evaporates to replace it, keeping the pressure in the cylinder constant. Examples are nitrous oxide and carbon dioxide. Non-liquefied gases do not become liquid when they are compressed at normal temperatures, even at very high pressures. These gases can however be liquefied at lower temperature at which point it is called cryogenic liquids. Common examples are oxygen and nitrogen. The reason why some gases, like nitrous oxide, can turn into liquids while others, like oxygen, cannot comes down to their critical temperature and pressure. To turn a gas into a liquid, you need to compress it at the right temperature. Gases become harder to liquefy as you raise the temperature because the particles in the gas gain more kinetic energy, making them more resistant to becoming a liquid. The critical temperature of a gas is the temperature at and above which it cannot be liquefied, no matter how much pressure is applied. The critical temperature of the oxygen is minus 119 degrees Celsius, so it's gaseous at room temperature. Cooling the gas below this critical temperature can liquefy oxygen. The critical temperature of the nitrous oxide is 36.5 degrees Celsius, so it is a liquid gas mixture at room temperature. If the room temperature is above 36.5 degrees, it exists only as gas. Critical pressure is a pressure required to liquefy gas at critical temperature. Depending in the critical temperature we can think of the gas as either gas or vapor. Gas exists in the gaseous state at room temperature and pressure. Its liquefaction at room temperature is impossible since the room temperature is above its critical temperature as explained earlier. Vapor is the gaseous state of a substance below its critical temperature. At room temperature and atmospheric pressure, the substance is liquid. This nature of the gases has an implication on the filling of cylinders and the measurement of cylinder content. Cylinder pressure will be the indication of its volume only if the contents are all in gaseous state. The diagram below shows how the oxygen volume and the pressure gauge reading correlates. The pressure falls linearly as the gas flows from the cylinder. Thus, the pressure always reflects the amount of oxygen remaining in the cylinder. The same is not true for nitrous oxide. As long as some liquid nitrous oxide remains in the tank and temperature remains constant, the pressure in the cylinder will be 745 psig regardless of the volume in the cylinder. At ambient temperature, nitrous oxide liquefies under high pressure, and the pressure of the gas above the liquid remains constant independent of how much liquid remains in the cylinder. 
Only when all the liquid has evaporated does the pressure start to fall, and then it does so rapidly as the residual gas flows from the cylinder. There is a limit to the amount of gas a cylinder can hold. The maximum pressure to which a cylinder can be filled at 70 degree Fahrenheit is called service pressure. At room temperature, oxygen is stored as a gas at a pressure of 2000 psi whereas nitrous oxide is stored in a liquid phase with its vapor at equilibrium at a pressure of 745 psi. As the liquid is less compressible than the gas, nitrous oxide cylinder is partially filled. Limiting the cylinder filling minimizes the risk of dangerous increases in pressure due to increased vaporization of the liquid with increase in the ambient temperature. This scenario could lead to an explosion. For liquefied gases like nitrous oxide, filling ratio is used to determine the level to which a cylinder is filled. The filling ratio is the ratio of weight of the gas in the cylinder to the weight of water the cylinder can hold. In United Kingdom, the filling ratio for nitrous oxide is 0.75. If a cylinder can hold 100 liters of water, it can hold 75 liters of nitrous oxide. In hotter climates, the filling ratio is reduced to 0.67. For non-liquefied gas like oxygen, it is recommended not exceed the service pressure though 10% above the service pressure is allowed in a tested cylinder. Boyle's law is a gas law which states that the pressure exerted by a given mass of gas at a constant temperature is inversely proportional to the volume occupied by it. In other words, the pressure and volume of a gas are inversely proportional to each other as long as the temperature and the quantity of gas are kept constant. Since temperature is constant, pressure multiplied by volume is equal to constant. Finally, if P1 and V1 are the initial pressure and volume of a gas, and P2 and V2 are the changed pressure and volume. We can write as P1V1 equals P2V2. This relationship is very useful to determine the volume of any gas at any given pressure in the cylinder. We can apply Boyle's law to measure the cylinder content based on the pressure gauge reading. A typical E-type cylinder has an internal volume of 5 liters. This is the volume, V1, of an E-cylinder. The reading on the pressure gauge gives us P1 for that volume, let's say 1500 psi since the cylinder is being used. The atmospheric pressure, P2, is 14.7 psi. All we need to calculate is the volume of uncompressed oxygen V2 in cylinder. We can now use the Boyle's law, P1 V1 equals P2 V2, so V2 equals P1 multiplied by V1 divided by P2, so V2 equals P1 V1 divided P2. Replacing with values V2 equals, 1500 into 5, by 14.7 is equals 510 liters, an E cylinder with the pressure gauge reading of 1500 psi contains 510 liters of oxygen. There is a linear reduction of the oxygen volume as a full type E oxygen cylinder at a service pressure of 1900 to 2000 psi contains 660 to 690 liters of oxygen. In the earlier slide, we calculated 510 liters as the amount of oxygen left in the E type cylinder with the pressure of 1500 psi. From this, we can estimate the duration the cylinder will last. Let's say we are using oxygen at the rate of 5 liters per minute. If we divide total volume by flow rate, we can get the time remaining. 510 divided by 5 is equal to 102 minutes or 1 hour and 42 minutes. There is however a better way to calculate the time a cylinder will last at certain flow rate. For this, we use conversion factor which is the maximum volume divided by maximum pressure of a cylinder. The formula to calculate the time a cylinder will last is by multiplying conversion factor and current cylinder pressure divided by flow rate. First, let's calculate the conversion factor taking maximum volume of E cylinder as 660 liters and maximum pressure or service pressure as 2000 psi. The factor we get is 0.33. Let's take the same example from the previous slide. 
using cylinder gauge pressure as 1,500 psi and the flow rate as 5 liters per minute, we get 0.33 times 1,500 divided by 5 is equal to 99 minutes or 1 hour and 39 minutes, which is the same time. But it is advised to use the conversion factors the manufacturers provide. The Boyle's Law and the conversion factor formula can be applied to cylinders containing a gas in a pure gaseous form. Calculations for nitrous oxide are only applicable once the pressure drops below 745 psi due to the presence of liquid and gaseous forms. The pressure will remain constant until 75% of the 1590 liters of gas is consumed, which is approximately equal to 400 liters. Prior to this point, the cylinder must be weighed to determine the amount of gas. The principle used is Avogadro's hypothesis. It states that equal volumes of all gases or vapor under same condition of temperature and pressure contain equal numbers of molecules. It means that if the temperature, pressure and volume are kept constant, any gas will contain same number of molecules. Hypothetically in this diagram, six molecules each. The hypothesis also states the one mole of any gas or vapor occupies 22.4 liters at normal temperature and pressure. In other words, 44 grams of nitrous oxide, 32 grams of oxygen and 28 grams of nitrogen occupies 22.4 liters. These weights are the molecular weight of one mole of aforementioned gas. Since nitrous oxide exists in a gas-liquid equilibrium, it is customary to weigh the cylinder with its content. If we subtract the empty cylinder weight which we call tear weight from the total cylinder weight, we can measure the weight of nitrous oxide in the cylinder. For example, let's assume the weight of the cylinder with nitrous oxide is 5.6 kg and the tear weight of nitrous oxide cylinder is 4.5 kg. So the weight of nitrous oxide is 1.1 kg or 1100 grams. As per the Avogadro's hypothesis, one mole of nitrous oxide with molecular weight of 44 grams occupies 22.4 liters of volume. Therefore, the volume occupied by 1100 grams of nitrous oxide can be calculated as 560 liters. So if we use nitrous oxide at the flow rate of 2 liters per minute, it will last for 280 minutes or 4 hours and 40 minutes.